Give me a mallet. <laughs> no, I'm good. I'm good. How are you guys all doing? Uh, okay. So uh, I'd like to give a bit of background information on you guys, find out where you guys are at. Who here has seen uh, Bursting Bubbles of Government Deception? Who's seen The Magnificent Deception? Who here hasn't and has no idea what I'm talking about when I say you're not a person? So we're all on the same page in that regard. Okay, folks, first off, I want to thank you guys for bringing me out here. It sure is an honor to walk in a room and have a bunch of people go, wow, whoo, and like you just shower. That's pretty cool in my book. <laughs> to me, it says showering is good. I should do it more often. Uh, we are living in some pretty exciting times, aren't we? And we've got some exciting stuff happening. Uh, to back it up, just for uh, the people on the, for that tape, Bursting bubbles of government deception, uh, to recall what it basically says is you are not a person, you have a person. This person exists in association with you, it evidences certain things, These, this person is what the government acts upon. You have the power to disassociate from that, and if you do so, the government's ability to act on you is severely restricted. In the magnificent deception, essentially the message there was that your social insurance number means you're a government agent, a government employee. You are working for a corporation. The corporation has rules that are applicable to the, its employees, and these rules are applicable to you for that reason. Today I got an email from the Law Society of British Columbia. Apparently they've secured an order against me in the Supreme Court of British Columbia where I'm not even allowed to talk to you like this because you might think it's legal advice and I'm talking to the person with an expectation of a fee or a gain or a reward. So uh, that's what was on my end. But I get a bunch of cool emails, eh? I got another one a couple days ago. I'm just a guy trying to study the law. Yeah, I'm a Canadian figuring it out. If I'm a little bit shinier than others, it's just because I've got a big loud mouth. I grew up with six sisters. What can you do? <laughs> But I got an email from this, uh, this person saying, oh, you know what, to me, you're like a hero. You're almost a superhero. And I'm getting a bit of notoriety that I never really expected. And I realized I am, in fact, a superhero. Because I have a superhero name. I have a superhero costume. I wear it under my regular clothes all the time. I can jump into that persona at any moment. I am, I am naked man. This represents my bum. <laughs> this doesn't. Yeah. Okay, you want more honesty? There, you happy? <laughs> Folks, we're living in some funny times, and uh, th this show that I want to teach you now, the next one, uh, the third stage, I call with lawful excuse. There are, in fact, tools you have available to you. Your big problem, everyone is here because they are unhappy with a couple of things. Government and courts. Essentially, that's what everyone's problem is. What if you had the power to disobey them? To simply say, no, I'm not giving you any of my power. I'm not accepting that you have any power over me. And what if there were tools available to you that would allow you to do this? We do have these tools. It's called with lawful excuse. And I'll share with you a couple of uh, some of the ways. I don't want to blow my own horn, but I do want you to see the power and authority that's available to you when you use this process. All of this is verifiable. You can check it. There's a guy by the name of uh, George. George Platt, I believe is his name. I'd have to check it out. He was in Nanaimo. He's a sustenance hunter. He was going out into the bush and hunting without a permit or a license. He came across a, a uh, the forest, one of the forest rangers, essentially, and the guy took his gun. He said, well, I'm going to keep hunting. And the guy who took his gun said, I'm going to keep taking your gun. And he said, well, you'll do that until I'm down to my last gun. And then all you're taking are the bullets. <laughs> you're not taking my last gun. They didn't like this. He, but they went and they talked to the RCMP. RCMP descended on his home. They took all of his guns. They took all of his ammo. They took his marijuana grow up. They brought 12 charges to bear against him, everything from uh, owning un uh, unregistered firearms, unlawful storage of the firearms, growing the marijuana, everything. I set him up with a notice of understanding and intent and a claim of right, which is what you use to establish your lawful excuse. 
The guy ended up serving it on them, pointed out that they stole his property and they were liable for it, better return it, made a demand under Section 337. He ended up getting called into court or, or into the conference center a week before court. They wanted him to sign an agreement. I, he called me, I said, you go ahead and sign that when he told me what it was. They gave him back all of his equipment. The pot that he was growing, they, they had destroyed that, they couldn't return that. All firearms, all ammunition, all equipment was returned to him. And all he had to agree to was that when he was in the bush hunting, that if he saw a, 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 an officer, he just wouldn't talk to him. <laughs> all of it went away and he just st stood back. This is the power we have. People are using this across the country because there are fundamental truths that we seem to forget when we, they get us playing their game. And these truths are, are, are foundational. They're just human beings and they're just using words. That's all they are, that's all they're using. They are not better human beings. They have no more inherent power over you. Their words might be a little bit ambiguous and tricky at times, but that doesn't mean they're any more powerful than yours, especially if you're speaking your truth. Looking into the criminal code, this is how what I ended up finding. If you go through section 15 of the criminal code, do we have internet access here or anything? I could find it on my, on my computer. But essentially what it says is this. It says that if someone obeys an order of a de facto court or government, they can't be put in jail. Fair enough? Now, in the absence, now let's analyze this, and this is because if you just read it and you don't actually start thinking about it, what does this mean? You're not going to see the remedy that they're hiding right there. It's right in front of your face. Let's suppose Section 15 did not exist then you could put someone in jail for obeying the order of a de facto court or government. But now you can't do that. Now, in the absence, you could be thrown in jail for obeying and therefore not thrown in jail for not obeying. Fair enough? A and B. A means jail. B means no jail. Now they're saying A does not mean jail. Fine. Where does it now say that B now means jail? Where does it say that you can, in fact, be incarcerated or punished for disobeying the order of a de facto court? Something which, in the absence of Section 15, was the given. They don't. You're dealing with de facto governments, de facto courts. All they have done is taken away our power to charge them for obeying a de facto order. There's nothing there that says you can be put in jail for disobeying it. And that is one step in your claim of right. Now, the notice of understanding and intent in the claim of right. I'll show you these sections of the law that, and, and the way I uncovered them that said, holy mackerel, this is amazing. Once you understand what Section 15 is saying and what it's not saying, more importantly, look to Section 38 and 39. Oh, yeah, there you go. Someone's been listening to me. <laughs> 38 and 39 talks about defense of personal property. And actually, I'll digress here for a moment. I'll show you how this has been used in New Zealand, Australia, Canada, any of the Commonwealth countries. This is effective and it works. There was a guy in New Zealand, what they were doing in New Zealand, corporations were going around and making offers for property from people who had been holding it in their family for hundreds of years. Thousands of years even, they said, no, we don't want your offer. But that offer then raised the property value, raised the taxes. The municipality would come in and lay a, a demand for taxes that the family couldn't, couldn't pay. They would end up losing their property and go on the auction. The corporation that made the initial offer would then come in and scoop it up at the, the market value that existed before the offer was made. They, they were in collusion, it looked like, from the corporations. So a young guy, a 21-year-old Maori kid, went out and he essentially went to what we would call Crown Land. And he built a home on it. And he said, screw you, I'm living here. And he had his family there. The developers and the municipality didn't like him doing that. They took him to court. The court ordered him, tear down your property in 30 days or you're going to jail for six months. He didn't know what to do. He spoke to a friend of mine. I told him how to use a claim of right, looked into the statutes there. He then served a notice of understanding and intent and a claim of right on the corporation, on the courts. He went back in 30 days later, he didn't tear down his home. 
the court said, it's my understanding you haven't torn down your home as you were ordered. You better have a very good reason. He said, I do. I have lawful excuse. Here it is. I have a claim of right. In the uh, New Zealand Crimes Act, it specifically states that you can disobey if you have a claim of right. In Canada, it uses lawful excuse. He then pointed out to the judge that theft, the definition of theft, was the removal of property without a claim of right. He said, here's mine, you don't have one, and if you try to take it, you're committing theft and you're liable. The judge immediately overturned his order, and that man stayed on his property. He did not tear down this house. The power that we have with a claim of right is the power to establish lawful excuse to disobey any order of any court or any government statutes, regulations, orders, or bylaws. It will not allow you to harm another human being, damage property, or use fraud in your contracts, but it does allow you to look at these people who make demands on you and say, no, 